Welcome to the Messy Mind Podcast, a show to support you in seeing entrepreneurship isn't always a straight line to get to your light bulb moments. I'm your host, Tammy L. Davis. In my consulting business, which is Next Level Consulting Services, one of our core competencies is communications. We support clients on how to effectively communicate for, doing, and after their change initiatives. Whether our clients are rolling out um, new IT software, trying to implement new business process changes, or even going through a merger and acquisition, we show them how to communicate with impact and a focused on the messaging for others. We show them how to provide and receive undivided attention to the change and defer judgment of the change. We also show how to convey messages in a simple, logical manner and with confidence. I like for our clients to ensure that their communication is two-way by checking for and understanding of the messages and asking questions, seeking clarity and responding accordingly when and where appropriate. So in a nutshell, we teach people how to effectively communicate and communicate with impact and focus. Now, my graduate degree is a Bachelor of Arts in Communications, and when I included communications as a core competency for Next Level, I must admit I took many aspects of what we do well for granted. For example, I assume that if our client had a corporate communications department, they would only need a slight level of guidance as opposed to any other division such as HR, finance, or purchasing. Now, I'm not calling out any of those specific departments. I'm just using it them as an example. I quickly learned my assumption was further from the truth. In my experience, corporate communications sends messages to inform as opposed to invoke emotions, which in turn calls people to action. In supporting the corporate communications department to shift on how they communicate to internal stakeholders as opposed to externally, I realized that over the years, there were five overarching points which really guide us to support our clients in drafting and creating and executing the right communication strategies. In other words, there are five tips I want to share with you to make sure that your project communications are on point. So at this time, grab your writing instrument, a notebook, and mark this point in the episode as I go through these five tips to, again, make sure that your project communications is or your change communications or your change initiative communications is on point. Tip number one, make sure you have continuous buy-in at the executive level. I know that you work closely with the C-level suites, and if you don't, you will um, at this particular point. The strategy has been approved, the plan has been finalized, and communication activities have commenced. You might be feeling great because you've identified messaging only to be performed by the executives, but just because they will serve as the sender, do you have their support and buy-in on what should be delivered? Do you work closely with the C-suite on the vision of what they want the outcome to be based on that messaging that they are saying that they are delivering? Or how do they want people to feel? Or even what are the specific calls of action do they want people to take? In addition, what touch points have you set up with this C-level suite or the executive level to ensure they stay engaged and connected as connected even more than maybe the director or manager levels, the ones who typically may have a, a heavier lift in the communication plan? Tip number two, prioritize the people side of change. This is where organizational change management or OCM, as I like to say, has a starring role. Communications is only one aspect of OCM and change management is a process that should be included in the planning and delivery of a project or your change initiative from the very beginning. 
oftentimes change is not taken into consideration, or if it is, the essence of OCM is misunderstood and not even placed within the stages of the overall project plan. Tip number three, have a clear enterprise strategy. This is tied to the overall change strategy or really transformation strategy within your department or organization. What is your vision? What are the desired end results? Why are you embarking on this change journey or this implementing this change initiative? What is its purpose? And more importantly, why? Why are you doing this change? What do you want to accomplish that transcends increased level of productivity? We want to be able to be ahead of our competition. One of my favorite exercises with our clients is to start with the end and work backwards. What I mean by that is start with the results of a successful implementation transformation. Start with a successful change initiative and unpack the steps you took to get there. Yes, close your eyes. That's right. Close your eyes. Start with the end in mind. See that vision. Be mindful of how you feel as you're walking through your successful change initiative and unpack the steps that you took to get there. Unpack everything that you said as you're swimming in your vision of a successful change and follow that. Those are the specific steps for your strategy. Number four, reach all employees. No one gets left behind. When you're embarking on a change initiative, a transformation journey, it is important that you have that motto of no one gets left behind. In my experience, one of the worst scenarios have been when employees or key stakeholders have been left out of the change journey transformation initiative. They haven't been considered when creating the communication strategy or plan. And once the awareness phase begins, they start to inquire as to why they haven't been invited to meetings. They haven't received messages and the miss list goes on and on. Who you think may be insignificant may end up being your greatest champion, your biggest contributor. Leave no stone unturned as it relates to who will be affected by your changing environment internally and externally. So your internal and external stakeholders. As you go through drafting your list of stakeholders, make it a living document that you're going to tweak something that you're going to revisit and adjust during your transformation. This will also support you in determining what messages should be adjusted as you progress through the execution of your change communications plan. And the last tip Tip number five, which probably is my favorite and maybe most controversial, is bring change resistant employees to the forefront. Far too many times my client wants to leave Tom in the corner. And I listen, there's so many acronyms. I don't know why I chose Tom. It was just the first name that came to mind. But you know who Tom is and you know you have a Tom in your department or company. You know it is the person who tends to lead with what is wrong with how we do this today or this process that we are currently in is working just fine. Why do we need to change this? Or better yet, there is no way this change initiative, this new process, this transformation will ever work. One of your greatest resistors can end up being your best allies. Their questioning and doubt will support you in analyzing, strategizing, creating some of your best communication approaches for all involved. You know why? Because resistors tend to ask some of the best questions in their attempt to derail the change initiative. Yes, I know this might sound a little bit unconventional, but trust me, their questions, their suggestions, their attempts to cast doubt. But here's a little secret. What they're actually doing is supporting you to address issues that may arise and matters that your change champions aren't even thinking about because they're excited and on the happy path. 
Embrace your resistors. They matter more than you can ever imagine. I hope these five tips support you. Five points that serve as our checklist when we support our clients in developing their communication strategies and plans. And I hope that the tips I offer support you in ensuring your communication is on point. Thank you for joining us this time on the Messy Mind Podcast. Please visit our website at themessymindpod.com. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you found value in this episode, we'd appreciate a rating on Apple Podcast or simply tell a friend about the show. Always remember to embrace the messiness of entrepreneurship. It can lead to your light bulb moments.